When I went to the Maharaj, he was that, um, you know, always come from the background of middle class America. You know, we're not, I'm assuming myself, although I had traveled, I certainly never found myself in a setting before a very strange atmosphere in a Hindu temple in a place where normally I would feel very uncomfortable and, and not very secure about what am I doing here. But what was so, such a, a part of the mystique of Maharaji was that you felt very comfortable. When I first saw Maharaji in form, it was like seeing my Jewish grandpa. You know, it just felt I wasn't I wasn't frightened. I wasn't I didn't feel that he was going to take anything from me that I that I was be exposed to anything. This wasn't some kind of trick on me. I just felt very very comfortable. And as an example of the way Maharaji worked in revealing himself is what happened in my experience with Maharaji, which is a very subtle, not very demonstrative, not very much of a miracle type conversation, but it was enough for him to let me know that he knew. And in my instance it was this. I of course had gotten to India, not of course, but I got to India about a month and a half earlier and I had gone to a meditation course at Goenka and there I would settle my mind tremendously. And I was very familiar with Maharaji's background because I'd been be here now many times over again and but I had no anticipation he was in India. I didn't know that he could be seen, I didn't know he was there, because to read be here now by inference or maybe directly as I recall it, it implies that Maharaji was not to be found. And when I went to the Goanka course, I'm regressing a little bit to what Maharaji how he revealed himself to me, but when I went to give some background, what's the Goanka course? And I heard that Ramdas was in India. I thought, oh, how wonderful this is fabulous. He's in India somewhere, but India is a huge place, like being in America. Big deal, you know? But I went to check into a hotel room in New Delhi, and sure enough, there was Ramdas on the, on the uh, check in um, book. I said, Jesus, this is fabulous, you know? I didn't even know if I'm going to see him. I mean, this is the end of my road. I'm really excited. Ramdas is here in India. My God, I can't believe that he's actually here. And what is he wrong to us? They have a little note for him. And there's some other digressions that I talked to Galenka about Ram Das, etc. But I went to see him and he said, What are you doing here? And I gave him my story, Ram Das is my story, and I said, you know, I'm fulfilled. I met you. He said, hey, I'm nothing. I'm not, you, what I have is nothing, you know. But I, I, if anything you see in me, I'm just a reflection of this Maharaji. He's actually you can see Maharaji, he's actually in Vrindavan. He said, you know, I'm gonna fact I'm gonna go down to Vrindavan tomorrow. You can come with me to see Maharaji. It's all wonderful, wonderful. He thought, no, 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 that's changed. You better go right now. Because you never know. He could be gone tomorrow, you know? <laughs> so I ran down uh, to jump on a train with a couple of people that were kind of following me around from the Goenka course and went to see Maharaji in, in, in Bindava. And of course, the guy had been only in India, like I say, a short time. Well, it was not a great travel. I wasn't familiar with a lot of things, but somehow, some way, made it right to the temple. And when I first uh, went into the temple, I didn't expect to, you know, too much of an American. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I heard that <coughs> be here now, so I anticipate some kind of wonderful thing's going to happen, but what, if anything?